Now we continue to see ongoing progress and momentum at the state level for protecting children from harmful experimental gender procedures, versions of the SAFE Act to protect children. You know, we talked about it. We worked to get the first one passed in Arkansas. We now have seen 23 states in total have passed these, most recently in Ohio, where the governor vetoed it, but it was overridden. And that's happened, uh, I think, about five times. But the left and those pushing the LGBTQ agenda have not retreated. And they won't, okay? I'm just going to tell you that. They're, they're not. They are relentless. Uh, they are going to force um, public affirmation of what they're doing, even when it is damaging to children and even to themselves. And so now we're seeing a very coordinated effort to intimidate and silence policymakers to stir up fear about those who want to protect children, both today in The Washington Post, in the USA Today, prominently ran major stories doing just that. Joining me now to discuss this, Dr. Jennifer Bowens, the director of the Center for Family Studies here at the Family Research Council prior to her work at FRC. Dr. Bowens worked as a clinician and researcher addressing the effects of psychological trauma. As a researcher, she studied the effects of mass traumatic events like 9-11. Dr. Bowens, welcome back to Washington Watch. Good to be with you, Tony. All right, so uh, two stories in two major news outlets, and lengthy stories at that, slanted stories too. Is this a coordinated effort to try to, f now that we've seen this successful um, move of the states to protect children, th it appears that they're trying to blur the lines and say, oh, everybody that's trying to, s to protect children wants to, to, to stop everyone from having a right to do what they want to do. Absolutely. I think the the sign of this is that we're making progress, right? Yeah. We are making tremendous progress in protecting kids from terrible procedures that will cause physical and psychological and spiritual damage for the rest of their lives. A apart from God, you know, bringing healing and intervention, right. but that's that's going to be the result. So to, to see these move so rapidly, and I've been in policy for a while, I mean, in a very short period of time, we have nearly half the states that have adopted these SAFE Acts, which prohibit on minors experimental drugs and surgeries. I mean, that's, that shows that it's a compelling, compelling position. Yes. Yeah, because when we actually look at the data, we see how poor um, the data is that's been used to support these practices. We can see, I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out Kids can't make decisions about, you know, what they're going to wear tomorrow to school, <laughs> let right. alone uh, gender well, identity. Well, you talked about the, their brains are not fully developed. That's right. Until they're about, what, 25? Yeah. And that's why we have to work even harder to protect children first um, when it comes to these types of procedures, because they're the most vulnerable. And, and they, they, I mean, we don't let them drive. <laughs> we don't let them, you know, get tattoos. We don't let them, you know, buy a gun but yet we're going to allow them to chop off body parts? Right. It's insanity. And I think what's happening is that the left is getting threatened by the move that we're seeing for children. Well, I think it's this. You know, when you combine this women's sports, you combine the SAFE acts, that people are saying, wait a minute, this is, this is not right. And, and they're afraid that their whole house of cards could come tumbling down. Yes. And so the latest move is, uh, you know, you want to take this away from adults, too. And at the end of the day, we're all about protecting people, loving people well, promoting practices that are going to bring healing and life and wholeness to, to them and also to communities. So it's actually a very loving position that we're, that we're taking to say this this isn't the way. Gender dysphoria is a, but a mere symptom of some other issues that are going on. And if you go down this path, it's not going to lead to wholeness or happiness. It may in the short term. We, we can concede that because you got what you, you, know, you think that has been promoted as an answer to you. But it's not going to produce fruit. Uh, in the long term, we, you can ask Walt Heyer, uh, you know, our own uh, Walt Heyer, who, who's gone through this as an adult. Right. Let's talk about the science of this, the health ramifications, the fact that whether it's children or it's adults, it's still experimental. It's very much experimental. In fact, um, just before coming on here, I was looking at a report from a WPATH, that's a, a transgender activist health organization, 
And one of the surgeons about a year ago was doing a, like kind of like a grand rounds and he's doing a presentation and he says, you know, there's a, these gender clinics popping up all over the place and um, some aren't trained well. Some of these surgeons aren't trained well. And but no care or but some care is better than no care. But right. We and have, we have to get this right is what he said. <laughs> well, I mean, in in the. Uh, the piece in the Washington Post, and this was, we actually talked about this yesterday with the Attorney General of Missouri, that Planned Parenthood has become a major source, Planned Parenthood, right. a major source for the transgender treatment. Yeah. So what kind of quote unquote health care is that when you go to a clinic and within a half hour, an hour, you, you get a, a prescription for something that is going to utterly transform your body and brain chemistry. Um, that is that is not how you do health care. <laughs> right. You give proper assessments, you look at underlying conditions, um, but, but that's not the way you, you go about uh, health care. Now, we're, we're almost out of time. But you have, uh, teaming up with some others, you've written a pretty extensive piece on the SAFE Acts and this whole issue. Yeah. So what we did is we wrote a piece called Trans uh, Youth Phenomenon, and it's basically asking the hard questions uh, and critiquing the, the research that's out there. And um, it's it's rather thorough, looks at the, the physical, because we, we also have a pediatrician who, who wrote with us, but it looks at the psychological issues that have been um, surrounding the, the transgender ideology, but also um, the social, just this, the whole right. gamut of, of so issues. So people can be better equipped and informed as to what this is really about and, 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 and ask questions and, and push back. We, we just cannot allow this to roll over us and reach our children. Yeah. Jesus said the truth will set you free. Yeah. And if we don't start from a premise of truth, which is what the transgender ideology does, it starts from a false premise. So we must embrace truth. And this um, resource will help you get at what the truth really is. And, and folks, you can get a copy of that. Uh, text SAFE, S-A-F-E, to 67742. That's SAFE to 67742, and you'll get a link. Download it for free. Dr. Jennifer Bowen, it's always great to see you. You too. Thanks for being here. Good to be here with you.